Hello everyone, we are once again joined by Aileen McDonald, the maths teacher, artist, science enthusiast, all sorts of things. But today we're going to test her luck. She's wearing the white gloves of destiny. She's going to close her eyes, choose a couple of cards from the card catalogue here at the Royal Society, very historic. And then whatever she pulls out, we're going to go and find downstairs with Keith Moore, the head librarian. I feel like I should do a little... So I'm really mixed up. Okay. Okay. Ooh, am I oh, going in the right direction? Right? Oh. <laughs> okay. okay, we're going to draw here. You like the okay. draw? Okay. It's, it's a good eye level drawer if I could see. Um, um, one, two, three, four. Okay. Beaufort Francis, Admiralty, 22nd of December, 1838, is sending him the plans and report of Clip Formtine. Uh, he will forward them later <laughs> to the Astronomer Royal. So if we bring in Keith Moore at this point to fill out the call slip, so it's all official. Keith, what do you make of this one? Uh, so that's in the Herschel correspondence. It's got Francis Beaufort said the Admiralty, so that's good. I'm going to be honest, I'm not feeling particularly confident about this one, but luckily we have a little rule here <laughs> with the White Gloves of Destiny where you get to do a provisional, like a second mm -hmm. card, just in case. So if you close your eyes again. Right, ready. Mm. Okay. This one. Nice. I'm gonna go. How far back? How far back does it go? Oh, quite far. Right. Hmm. I'm gonna go here. What do you got? <laughs> Doctor Garden's. Oh no. <laughs> aerostatical hypothesis of the various changes of the weather. George Garden. It's an early one. Yeah. So that's 1677. Wow. Yeah. We will now head downstairs and see how you did. We're just about to gate crash Rupert's staff <laughs> tour of the archives. Oh, we're going to be on an objectivity video, are you? Oh, are wow. Look, I've never seen well so many done. people down here. <laughs> no, Rupert. Yeah, everyone knows Rupert. OK, so we have two things to get. We have a letterbook copy. Yeah. And we have uh, some Herschel correspondence. Let's go mm -hmm. to the Herschel correspondence first, because mm -hmm. otherwise we'll squash James when we <laughs> roll the stacks there. So Herschel is over here. Here we go. So these are all of the letters uh, wow. to Sir John Herschel. So we want Herschel 3, which is that volume. You can see Francis Beaufort yeah. named on the side of the volume. Can't get <laughs> right better than Babbage that. Right next to Babbage as well. Right next to Babbage. We yeah. can't have Babbage. No, nope, you didn't pick him. Not what the can't have him. <laughs> so here we go. Wow. You take that. I'm partial to a bit of Herschel. Uh, let book 10 is going to be right there. Wow. There's a lot more exercise involved I know, in the library than you think. I know, yeah, it's uh, pretty fit. <laughs> we have our two volumes, let's go and let's have a look this. on the shelves. Yeah. Alright, so here we are with the selections. I'm guessing first we should do the proper first selection, which is the the Herschel letter from... Francis Beaufort. Yeah. Who is Francis Beaufort? Great Navy hydrographer. Right. You've heard of the Beaufort scale? That's wind, isn't it? There you go, Francis Beaufort. I take it back, this may yet be a good pick. So this is letter 361 in these very bulky volumes. If you were a scientist at this period, uh, you would have a very healthy correspondence in your lifetime. 10,000 letters easily if you were corresponding to other people. It's effectively just the same as if you were emailing people today. I mean, how many emails do you send out? So here we have Herschel's correspondence, lots of it. And the letter you picked is this one, 361. So we can see it's 22nd December, 1838. Come on then, let's see if Alien can read it first <laughs> well, it's, before, it's, we, before it's, we bring in the big guns. It's sent from the Admiralty <laughs> and it begins, Dear Sir John. Dear Sir John, the... <laughs> nope. <laughs> The Clip Fontague. Clip Fontague. How are you doing this? This is actually a superpower, which you allowed. I yeah, got that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Keith, come on, put it. us out of our misery. <laughs> okay, so the Clip Fontaine report and all the plans which you allowed me to send to you are in a separate role. So he he said the good stuff separately from from this it's letter. An attachment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Please see attached. I have taken the liberty of enclosing them herewith. So, so he's, there's another enclosure here. So basically, all the good stuff is in the enclosures, and that's just a covering letter. <laughs> Well, not great. The, the Herschel papers are chock full of interesting mathematics. And I managed to dodge it all. You, you, <laughs> you body swerved a lot. That is it's not a good pick. Mm. I'm sorry. 
That is not a good pick. The title of this video, World's Unluckiest Pick. No, no, no. Uh, no you still have your reserve. Ah. Yeah. So maybe this is going to make Come amends. On, George Gordon. So this is letterbook copy 10. Oh. Let's just say one, two, three here. Let's just see if that's a paper number. You see when Keith flicks through, you see all these cool <laughs> diagrams and things, and it just hints at what you could have had. So here we go. Page one, two, three. This is a fair copy volume of manuscripts that were sent to the Royal Society, letters that were sent into him. So this is uh, a bit easier to read, so mm -hmm. even Brady will be able to manage this one. <laughs> and you can see it's uh, Dr. Garden's aerostatical hypothesis of the various changes of the weather. Now, I don't know about mm -hmm. you, but I'm always a little bit worried when someone emails me when they say they have a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it starts with an apology, so... Yeah, well, that, that's always good. I'm sorry I can give you no better satisfaction in this account, you demand, of the conjecture we had lately occasion to talk about. My other necessary diversions and the few observations I have made render it uh, the more imperfect. So it... It's not very good, he's saying, to begin with, so well, that's fair enough. However, since it is your pleasure, you shall have it as it is. And if it come afterwards to be cleared and confirmed by the joint observations and sentiments of others, it may pass for an aerostatical <laughs> hypothesis of the various changes of the weather. So he's, he's just setting up the paper in that, in that beginning there. Let's just get an idea how long this is. One, two, three, four, five... Six, seven. Oh, well, this is heading towards Eight. I have an hypothesis yeah. <laughs> territory. Ten, eleven. <laughs> Hang on. 12, 13. This is 15 and a half pages long. And mm -hmm. on which page does he prove the Riemann hypothesis? Well, I don't. <laughs> shall, shall, we, shall we skip to the conclusion? Yeah, let's, let's, see how the, <laughs> let's see how the letter ends. In obedience to your commands, I have scribbled over my thoughts about this matter, and you see also how necessary it is for establishing a theory of the weather, to have more universal correspondence in observing jointly the various changes of the weather in distant places, the several quarters of the winds, their strength, the time of their use and continuances, and the various changes in the baroscope observed by a universal measure agreed upon, the changes of sealed and open thermometers, of hygroscopes, etc., and the latitude and longitudes of those places. Actually, that's pretty sensible. He says you need a network of observations all around mm -hmm. the globe doing oh, okay. meteorological observations. Was that is, is not known enough. at that time? Well, uh, they hadn't done it yet. Okay, uh, so, so it was a sensible scientific suggestion at that point. Yeah, absolutely mm. right. Uh, and of course, there were plenty of places in the world that they hadn't quite got to yet, mm. like Australia. Is it so he's not like proposing like a theory of everything for the weather, like he thinks there needs to be some way to know what the weather will always be. He's just saying, mm. hey, maybe we should just measure the weather mm. more. James there behind the camera will take a photo of all these pages mm. and we'll put them somewhere on the web. So if you want to read all 15 and a half pages and find out exactly what Garden's going on about here, you can do that. But Alien has a plane to catch. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to take a rain check on that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, I have feelings for this weather paper. I, you know, I think it's got potential. Do you know, I brought a four-leaf clover with me and then I lost it on the way over here. Yeah, we'll mm. blame that. <laughs> Everyone happy? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You can come back another time. <laughs> Don't worry, we didn't let Alien visit the Royal Society vaults without seeing some of the cooler stuff, and we even had the camera rolling while she checked it all out. For that behind the scenes footage, check out our Patreon page. There are links in all the usual places. Why is it getting his hair? What? <laughs> <laughs> but is it? Is it pretty? Of course it is. Shut up, Brady. This is in Darwin's hand, he's writing. It is in Darwin's, yeah. So I'm going to beg a favour of you, which your taste for natural history will, I hope, lead you to grant. It is... <laughs> it's so good. It is to collect for me during your ensuing expeditions and preserve in spirits the northern species of Cirripedia or barnacles, yeah. noting the latitude under which found... There's the a lot of Darwin letters like this Darwin letter. Yeah, it's yeah, like, so bring me barnacles. 